About a year ago, I made a video covering my experience learning to play guitar with Rocksmith 2014 on PC. As an absolute beginner, I found it to be an invaluable resource for lessons, technique improvement, and most importantly, motivation to continue practicing. Since then, I've continued to practice and improve, playing anywhere from a couple of minutes to a couple hours nearly every day. Rocksmith 2014 is a game that changed my life in a way I never expected and gave me a gateway into a new hobby that I truly love. Coincidentally, while I was in the process of writing the script for that video, Ubisoft announced their next iteration in the Rocksmith series, Rocksmith Plus, an all-new game with an overhauled UI, new features, and a never-ending list of songs to stream, replacing the one-time purchase with a paid subscription model. If you've seen my retrospective, you'll recall that I wasn't impressed with the Rocksmith Plus beta. Rocksmith Plus is really disappointing in its current state. For one, it's missing basic features like lyrics on the play screen, a streaming mode, and guitarcade, with a litany of options absent that were in the previous game, but the fact of the matter is that when you plan to charge a monthly fee for something that was originally a flat price, it needs to be infinitely better than the original. Rocksmith Plus has the potential to get to that point, something I emphasized in my feedback survey, but in its current state, I definitely recommend players go for the existing 2014 remastered game instead, because right now, Rocksmith Plus feels a lot more like Rocksmith Minus. Since that video was released, Ubisoft announced a delay from the game's original release date of Fall 2021 all the way to September 6, 2022. They said it was to improve the core features and expand the library. I was really happy to get this news, hoping that Rocksmith Plus was going to be the next step in educational software for beginner guitarists. As you can probably tell from the title of this video, that's far from the case. So why is Rocksmith Plus such a disappointing result after nearly a year of waiting? We'll get to that, but I'd like to start by focusing on the positives. First, I'd like to mention that I plan to make a lot of comparisons between Rocksmith Plus and 2014 in this video, so if you haven't seen my original retrospective, I'd recommend giving it a look. However, if you've already played the original, or just want to get an idea of what Rocksmith Plus has to offer on its own instead of in comparison to its predecessor, you shouldn't have any trouble following along. Getting into the game, after a quick setup session and an explanation of the mechanics, we're sent into the main menu. The entire UI has been overhauled from top to bottom, even loading in much faster than the original. Instead of the empty studio aesthetic of 2014, the game is designed to look more like a website or an app, and I really like the change. The dark background with lit up, saturated menu items feels cool and modern. More importantly, the game puts everything you need right at the top. The homepage features your saved songs so you can keep practicing the tracks you enjoy right away, while the options at the top of the screen allow you to adjust your settings, customize some of the visuals, jump straight into tutorials, play songs, and search through the massive library. Going through each of the options, the most important for an educational tool like this is the lessons. The game does an excellent job of slowly introducing new concepts and showing how different topics are related. For example, when playing bass, you'll go straight from the lesson on the root in the fifth to the lesson on adding in the octave. 2014's lessons did have follow-ups, but I feel that connecting similar concepts like this in a grid is much easier to understand for new players, and it's likely to get them to think about how to really play instead of just showing them where their fingers should go at a given time. There are also new or updated lessons on different styles of music, showing how different genres utilize the guitars in vastly different ways. Even outside of the lessons, the teaching tools have been expanded a bit. When practicing a song, there are more options for learning slowly than ever before. The note-by-note -note feature allows players to get an idea for how certain sections of a song are played before actually trying to do so, pausing between each note until it's played correctly. I see this being extremely helpful for new guitarists who can't hit notes without looking at both the fretboard and which string they're playing, as well as experienced players who want to understand how they should be playing a more complicated song. Even when the song is over, the game shows the player how they performed on various techniques, as well as where to improve. Are your bends off? Did you have trouble with palm mutes? Was a certain section really tricky? The game will get right into the part of the song that needs the most improvement, rather than forcing you to step through section by section. 
Moving on to other new features and improvements, the game has some subtle and some not-so-subtle tweaks that really emphasize the developer's goals to make Rocksmith Plus a smoother experience than 2014. Tuning your guitar is much faster and easier, with the new interface clearly showing how the game is interpreting what you play. And the tones coming from the virtual amp also sound slightly better than 2014, much cleaner and more clear as a representation of what you're playing. There are also two major new features that are really exciting for fans of the original. First, the ability to use an audio interface instead of a real tone cable or microphone is great for experienced guitarists who don't want to spend 30 bucks on yet another wire. It's a bit finicky to set up, but no more so than any other music software. You can also connect using the Rocksmith mobile app, but I had some trouble getting things working with my acoustic and results from others seem mixed, but for those who can get it working, it's a great addition. Even better, all songs can now be played using traditional tabs instead of the typical Rocksmith interface. This is fantastic news for those who are already used to using normal tabs, as well as beginners who want to learn in a way that better prepares them for learning songs outside of Rocksmith. Of course, the biggest selling point being advertised for this game is its massive and ever-expanding song library. At launch, the game came with over 8 thousand songs, and had even more added during my one month subscription period. It's absolutely staggering to have this many tracks in the game, with some obscure favorites of mine making a surprise appearance. Not only does this massive library exceed the original two games with all DLC included, but also contemporary virtual guitar lessons like Musician and Fender Play, all at a cheaper price. Whatever genres you enjoy, whatever style you'd like to play, Rocksmith Plus has you covered. While you're not likely to find every song you'd want to play, you're almost guaranteed to find at least a few songs in your wheelhouse. Now, not every song has tab arrangements, but they do all come with a series of chord progressions, which is a cool idea for playing backing music generally resembling a song without getting into the intricacies of learning the entire piece, especially if you'd like to play and sing at the same time. Even then, over 1,000 songs in the library do currently have some sort of tablature, and the community can even add their own tabs via the Rocksmith Workshop if they're inclined to learn how to use the software. You're not allowed to add songs, only tabs for tracks already in the library, but it's a nice gesture for passionate fans of certain songs that the Rocksmith team hasn't quite gotten to yet. The reason I wanted to start with the positives is to showcase the hard work of this game's developers. Despite the title of this video, it's easy to see that the team behind Rocksmith Plus is full of passionate devs that truly wanted to make the next generation of fun, educational guitar software. Still, the title isn't clickbait. Rocksmith Plus is ultimately a failed follow-up to its predecessor for a variety of reasons. I just want to make it clear that this is likely due to Ubisoft as a publisher, not a failure on the part of the devs. If anything, I'm sure they're more disappointed in how things turned out than anyone else. So let's get into why. When discussing the downfalls of Rocksmith Plus, it's important to know what came before and what it's competing against now. Rocksmith was the first of its kind, a revolutionary software that turned the mockery aimed at Guitar Hero and Rock Band's imitation into a real tool able to teach beginners the basics of playing guitar. Later down the road, apps such as Musician, Fender Play, and Guitar Tricks came out with a similar concept, but utilizing an app on your phone instead of a proprietary cable. These apps also charged a monthly fee, unlike Rocksmith's flat price, and Rocksmith Plus took a page out of their book. We'll get into specifics soon, but one thing that's clear is Ubisoft's desire to mold Rocksmith Plus into a game that would get fans of the original to sign up for a subscription service, while also getting users of other guitar teaching software to switch over. Not only do they get to continue making a profit as long as the game retains subscribers, but unlike with DLC where users have to be enticed with quality songs before they invest more into the product, this new model only needs to focus on ensuring current users are content with what they're given at the start. Let me explain. 
At its core, this issue involves impermanence as well as a bit of the sunk cost fallacy. With the original games, if you chose not to purchase DLC, you still got to keep an excellent piece of software. So in order to compel players to purchase more, a greater effort and investment was required of the developers since they were trying to make players who were content enough with the game to still be playing feel discontent with their song library. And the only way to do that is with expensive licensing deals to get new songs that a lot of people actually want to learn how to play. In contrast, Rocksmith Plus forces players to pay by default, meaning that if they stop paying, they don't just lose out on the new songs that'll be added, but they no longer get to play the game at all. Not only that, but players who have been waiting for their favorite songs to be added might even see canceling their subscription as a waste of their time and money spent waiting for the new content. It's the same as with any subscription streaming service. I may not have watched anything on Amazon Prime for the past 10 months, I'm getting to Ring of Power, I promise, but the ability to do so whenever I want is what keeps me subscribed. Now that we've covered why the subscription model is beneficial for Ubisoft, let's discuss why it isn't beneficial to the players. To start, the subscription requires that players be online at all times while playing. The benefit of a smaller download size is far outweighed by this negative. I only have one instance of being unable to play due to the servers being down, but I also have gigabit internet. Someone with a slower internet speed is likely to have trouble playing. Even without that issue, it's an unnecessary limitation that can still affect the game. As a PC player, it's certainly disappointing that this results in the inability to mod the game like you could 2014, but that's really just a nitpick. More importantly, certain benefits that could come with the game being more like a streaming service was shot down with the lack of crossplay on multiple devices, with the console versions even being put on the back burner for the mobile app development. However, the biggest problem caused by the game being always online is that songs take longer to load when you select them. That, combined with the absolutely massive library, means that if you're interested in checking out a new genre or hearing some samples to find new songs to play, it takes much longer to go through the list and hear enough of a song to decide if it's to your taste. And trust me, with this song library, you're probably going to be looking through a lot of songs you've never heard before. We'll talk about the song list later, believe me, but the important matter here is value. Players aren't getting anything tangible out of their purchase, and in the long run, a subscription service costs more than a flat purchase, so the developers really need to justify that cost. And that's the core problem with Rocksmith Plus. Not only does it fail to justify its own value, but it has less to offer than its predecessor, both in terms of features and overall quality. As stated in my original video, Rocksmith's greatest advantage for beginner guitarists is its ability to keep you motivated to play through variety. Whether it's the awesome track list, the lessons, guitarcade, multiplayer, session mode, tone designer, they all give you something new to try out when what you're doing gets boring or repetitive. Rocksmith Plus is missing a lot of those features. First, the lessons are trimmed down to the bone here. While some new concepts make an appearance, Rocksmith 2014 had far more topics and went into more detail, which is baffling, but not as strange as removing features entirely. Guitarcade is gone, meaning no more fun minigames to improve specific techniques. Tone Designer only exists in the tab charting software, meaning you don't get to have fun experimenting with different pedals and plugins virtually to get an idea for how certain guitarists get their sound. Session Mode is gone, meaning there's no free playing to try out new solos or experiment with different scales. Even Multiplayer was taken out, along with Score Attack, instead putting all of the eggs into the Learn a Song basket. Each of these modes did have their own issues, but were welcome additions to the game and meant that each player had more to sink their teeth into when jumping in. By comparison, Rocksmith Plus is a huge downgrade. Speaking of which, let's get into the actual gameplay. While the visuals are sleek, the new approach to arpeggios and repeated chords are difficult to see. For those unaware, arpeggios are when you keep your fingers in the same place, but pluck individual strings to make a melody out of the chord. It's a tricky idea to represent visually, but Rocksmith 2014 did a solid job with its transparent markings indicating when a chord was coming, while the notation remained the same. The benefit here is that if you didn't want to arpeggiate and just play the individual notes, that was an option too, depending on what you feel more comfortable playing. In Rocksmith Plus, the finger markings on the chord shape are identical to those on the track, meaning that as they get closer, there's a chance of things looking like a jumbled mess. 
As well, the use of small circles instead of bars that span the width of each fret makes it more difficult to see which fret you're supposed to be on for each note. The thing is, this isn't necessarily terrible and could be fixed by making the chord itself more clear and replacing the notes with individual lines, but the fact that it would also be improved by just switching back to the old visuals is a major problem. Then there's the repeated chords. When the old game requires you to play multiple chords in a row, the initial chord was shown, followed by clear, slightly shorter panels telling the player when to strum, while muted chords simply had an X on the panel. It could have issues when muted chords were mixed into normal chords in quick succession, but it's pretty much perfect otherwise. In plus, the chord panels are changed to lines on the bottom and side of the track. The problem is that these lines are often obscured by the initial chord notes and simply aren't as easy to sight read. Not to mention, the muted chords are indicated by an X above the side of the track, meaning that while your eyes are looking at the lines down below to see when to strum, you also need to focus on the area above to know whether to mute the strings. It's not as egregious as the arpeggios, but when you consider what came before and the fact that both of these features are meant to be seen on a tiny phone screen at some point in the future, it's an undeniable problem. Aside from the visuals, the game also falls short in terms of functionality. In theory, the chord progressions that I mentioned earlier would be a great idea for allowing beginners to get the gist of a song down, get a few under their belt, and gain some confidence for playing outside of the game. Though one thing I neglected to mention is that these chords aren't actually made by human beings, but instead by an AI. An AI that I can only assume was programmed by a tone-deaf intern because this is bad. So many of these chord progressions aren't matched to the songs themselves. It's extremely jarring to be playing the right chord, but having it sound so far off from what you're meant to be playing. On top of that, the tones used on the virtual guitar often sound nothing like the song either, further exacerbating this issue. It's clear that these were only put into the game to stall for time and pad out the library in the hopes that the community would do Ubisoft's job for them in the Rocksmith Workshop. It's infuriatingly lazy, especially when you find a song that you really want to play only to be left with some chords that would be more accurate on Ultimate Guitar Tabs. Not to mention that you'd think with this AI integration, they'd also have one try to get the lyrics on screen for every song, but no. Most of the songs in the game don't have lyrics attached either, which isn't the worst thing in the world, just another annoyance to throw onto the pile. With that said, you may be thinking that the songs with actual charts are better, and to a degree, that's definitely true. The game does a much better job of recognizing when you aren't playing a full chord or the right note, requiring the player to actually play bar chords and vibrato, though it still can't tell the difference between muted and non-muted notes. Still, it's a step in the right direction. Unfortunately, this is accompanied by some major issues with note detection. While making the requirements more strict is perfectly understandable, they went way too hard in that direction. The game misses notes way too often, even when they're played perfectly. And while at first I was blaming myself for not having the skill I thought I did, after watching some expert guitarists give the game a shot, I was shocked to find that it happened to them too, as well as some in the Rocksmith subreddit. And it doesn't stop there. The tones in charted songs don't fare much better than their chord progression counterparts, having some massive differences between the song itself and the virtual amp. The amps themselves may be better at their jobs, but too many songs have them set up incorrectly. And in that regard, some of these charts are just… wrong? Inaccurate tabs, using bar chords when the song itself uses power chords, being out of time with the song, though that may be a result of the always online streaming. None of these issues are constant, but when they pop up, it's really noticeable. Something that will infuriate people who know how to play, and endlessly confuse and demotivate new guitarists. All of this is only made worse by the UI. As mentioned before, I love some of the changes. The switch to a grid system makes looking through tracks much faster, and the overall aesthetic is just so much cleaner and more interesting. Then you start using it, and you realize how unfinished it all really is. You have your minor annoyances, like clicks not being registered, or song lists not saving your sorting method and filters when clicking away, the second of which has actually been patched since release, but then there are the other problems, and when you're asking players to search through 8,000 songs to find one they like, these add up fast. 
to start, while the bugs with sorting and filtering have been fixed, you're still not able to sort or filter your saved songs, which means that in theory you might be spending quite some time looking through all the songs you'd like to replay in order to find one that suits your mood. Though with this song list, that may not be much of an issue. Additionally, not only is this not a filter, but bass tracks don't even indicate to the player whether a song is picked or fingered. While it's not a hard and fast rule for most songs, it's certainly nice to know what's recommended, especially since it was in 2014. They also haven't added a similar indication for guitar, something that would add a lot of clarity when opening up a song that's meant to be fingerpicked, or at least act as a warning sign for someone of my skill level. Most importantly, however, the difficulty ratings for many of these songs is absolutely ridiculous. It's clear that the team yet again used an AI to determine the difficulty of a song's chart just like in 2014, but the difference here is the vast number of songs and the percentage of them that are by unknown artists. I've seen songs labeled Basic Difficulty, aka the easiest songs in the game, have bar chords, arpeggiation, quick string switching, pinch harmonics, just some really advanced techniques that beginners aren't going to be able to pull off. I'll say again that I'm not a great guitarist, but if I'm struggling with some of the most basic songs in the game after playing consistently for two years, imagine how discouraging this game must be for someone who's just starting out. Of course, this was a problem in 2014 as well, so why is the poor difficulty detection so much worse here? Simple, because Rocksmith 2014 actually has songs new players would want to learn how to play, meaning that players who are familiar with the songs know how hard they are and are more likely to stay motivated to stick with them. That's right, I've danced around it enough. The song list in Rocksmith Plus is atrocious. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of songs in there, but it's immediately clear that Ubisoft cared more about making the number of songs as big as possible rather than including songs people would actually want to play. I love Bowling for Soup and Goldfinger, so it's not like the game is devoid of anything worth playing, but when you think about the rock classics you'd want to play, especially ones in previous games, it's severely lacking. Some of Rock's greatest artists are missing from the game entirely, and when I say some, I mean most. You want to play anything by The Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Kenny Loggins, ACDC, The Rolling Stones, The Eagles, Chicago, Bruce Springsteen, Metallica? Well, too bad. They aren't there. Oh, you thought I was done? How about David Bowie, Queen, The Grateful Dead, Pink Floyd, Jimi Hendrix, The Ramones, Creedence Clearwater Revival, Iron Maiden, Green Day, The Who, Black Sabbath, The Doors, Nirvana, Chuck Berry, Elton John, Bob Dylan, Frank Zappa, Yes, U2, Little Richard, The Beach Boys, Prince, The Beastie Boys, Cream, Neil Young, or Rush? Nah, none of them are on the list. <laughs> of course. To be fair, this is only the case for the US track list, and many of these artists could be added in the future. Hell, some of them may have even been thrown into the game as I was editing this video, with the developer's stated goal to add at least 50 new songs every single month. Maybe they'll even be able to add in some other missing artists, like Alice in Chains, Linkin Park, Avenged Sevenfold, The Deer Hunter, Def Leppard, Foo Fighters, Jack White, Jack Johnson, Kiss, Muse, Paramore, Blink-182, Sum 41, Rise Against, Rage Against the Machine, The Smashing Pumpkin, System of a Down, Weezer, Tom Petty, Oasis, The Kinks, The Knack, Motley Crue, Arctic Monkeys, or Radiohead! <sighs> Sarcasm aside, one of the most insulting things this game does is include a ton of songs by some artists, but conveniently leave out their biggest hits. You know, the ones for which the licensing rights would be the most expensive. Bowling for Soup has 35 songs, but notably missing are 1985, High School Never Ends, and Punk Rock 101. Rick Springfield is missing Jesse's Girl. Eric Clapton is only in a single song as a featured artist, and other artists like Johnny Cash, The Birds, Aerosmith, and Slayer, among many others, only have one or a few songs, but none that are in their top 10 most played on Spotify. None of their actual hits. Coming back to the gaslighting comment from earlier, it's almost as though they stretched the budget as thin as possible, but wanted to be able to say, what do you mean, of course we have some of Rock's biggest artists, look at all these famous bands, while foregoing the investment needed to get the songs people would actually go out of their way to play. But hey, if you love The Clash or Boston, this game's got you covered. 
just don't go looking for much else. Hell, The Clash have over 100 songs in the game, meaning that over 1% of the total track list is comprised of that one band. And that goes for another world-famous band as well, The Wiggles. Yeah, it's been mean to death on the Rocksmith subreddit already, but The Wiggles have over 100 songs in the game, meaning that like The Clash, they make up a substantial portion of the track list. Not only that, but how the fuck do you add over 100 Wiggles songs and manage to leave out Fruit Salad? That's just sad. And if you really doubt my assessment on the popularity of the songs in this game, let me ask you this. Why is it that you can't sort songs by most popular? Sure, Ubisoft keeps the most popular songs in the entire game on the homepage at all times, but that's more of an advertisement to show that the game has some stuff worth playing. No, I'm asking why they don't let you sort by the most popular songs to play in a specific genre or for a specific difficulty setting. And the answer is simple because people would immediately see that the number of songs they want to play doesn't even extend past the first page. This brings us back to value. Rocksmith Plus costs $15 a month, or $99 a year for the cheapest subscription. Of course, the game doesn't come with a real tone cable, so most players are going to want to spend the $30 on that as well. Hell, it's a missed opportunity for Ubisoft to run a promotion giving away a free cable with your purchase of a year-long subscription, but I digress. By comparison, Rocksmith 2014 can be purchased today with a real tone cable included for around $60. This means that the price difference between the two games for the first year is roughly $70. Bucks. Assuming you make up that difference by purchasing DLC, you can get roughly 23 songs without waiting for a sale or buying any packs. The question is, given what we know about the song list now, do you trust Ubisoft to add at least 23 songs that you'd like to play to Rocksmith Plus out of the 600 they've promised per year? Then you can ask yourself if you trust them to add 33 songs you'd like to play in the year after when you're paying another 100 bucks to keep your subscription going instead of using that money on DLC in Rocksmith 2014. The reason I can make these comparisons is because the benefit of DLC is that you only have to purchase songs that you'd want to play or that you feel would be worth the money you're spending. And of course, none of this is even bringing up the extra value posed by Rocksmith 2014. The litany of modes, playing offline, snappier UI, and clearer tabs all add even more to what you get in addition to the fact that you don't have to worry about losing everything you've paid for when Ubisoft eventually decides to shut down the servers. And none of that even mentions mods, both for quality of life improvements and custom DLC. The fact of the matter is that by nature, the switch to a subscription service requires that the player trusts the developers and publisher to continuously provide content that makes the service worth the cost, and unless some absolutely massive changes in strategy are implemented, I don't see that trust being repaired anytime soon. When all is said and done, the biggest difference between this game and its predecessor is the reason players stick with Rocksmith 2014. Pushing through calluses, frustration, plateaus, and lack of motivation, because that game instills in the player a deep love for playing the guitar. It pushes you to keep trying, keep learning, and truly makes the act of learning to play fun. Meanwhile, the new game may have the potential to do the same somewhere deep down, but I think the main reason most players would choose to stick with Rocksmith Plus is to make sure they get their money's worth and not much else. When I made my first video on Rocksmith, I don't think I really understood just how life-changing that game was for me. So if this video came off as overly negative, or even outright mean at times, I apologize. It's just difficult seeing something that affected my life in such a meaningful way be treated the way Ubisoft treats Rocksmith Plus. And make no mistake, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that Ubisoft is to blame for this game's failings. 
from the moment you boot up this game, you can feel the passion of the development team forcefully being pushed down by the combined weight of Ubisoft's greed and the mountain of filler songs. And if you thought my criticisms were unfair, that's fine. But just know that I actually left out a few minor rants about how the game cancelled my subscription a few hours early, which prevented me from getting the last bit of footage I wanted for this video, as well as how the lack of a demo could be their way of hiding the game's lackluster nature behind a paywall. One whose most expensive option is also the most tempting due to its lower monthly cost. I'd also like you to keep in mind that Rocksmith is advertised as an educational tool for beginners, so many of the problems and roadblocks I mentioned may seem small on the surface, but all of those same issues are amplified exponentially when you consider someone just starting out who's unable to discern the difference between a problem with the game and a problem with how they're playing. Could Rocksmith Plus eventually be fixed and manage to be worth the cost of a subscription? It's certainly possible. Is that likely to happen before users start to drop their subscriptions en masse and Ubisoft cans the entire thing? I don't know. What I do know is that if you fall in love with Rocksmith Plus and it manages to give you the drive and motivation you need to be passionate about learning to play guitar, then I'm extremely happy for you and hope it changes your life in the way it did for me. I just don't see that being the likely outcome for the vast majority of new guitarists who use this game as their gateway into the hobby. I genuinely do hope that the Rocksmith Plus team manages to turn things around, but hope and belief are two very different things. However, that still remains to be seen, and only time will tell. For now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more in the future, please feel free to subscribe, and as always, have a mighty nifty day today.